Okay, so we're going to continue on with a numerical example of solving AX equal B. And uh, this is number two in section 7.3. Um, so the matrix is 1, 2, minus 1, uh, 2, 1, 1, 1, minus, uh, minus 1, minus 1, 2. Oops, that's a plus 1. Oh gosh. Be sure and copy down the the uh, problems, right? <laughs> Good. So we're trying to solve this. Um, hmm. What do I do first? Let's do some row reduction. So uh, minus two row one plus row two. Put the result back into row two. Uh, minus row one plus row three. Put the back result back into row three. And let's see, 1, 2, minus 1, 1. And then uh, let's see, minus 2 plus 2 would be 0. Of course, that's how we planned it. Minus 1 times 1 is 0. And then let's see, minus 2 times 2 is minus 4, plus 1 is minus 3. And then minus 2 minus 1 is minus 3. And then, uh, let's see, minus 2 times minus 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3. And then, uh, where are we? Minus 1 times minus 1 is positive 1, plus 2 is 3. And then, uh, for the last part, we have minus 2 plus 1 is minus 1. And then, uh, for the last one, we have minus 1 and 1 is 0. Good. And now you see that we're going to have a problem, right? because these two rows are the same in the matrix, but they're not the same in the right-hand side. So let's go ahead and flip one of these up. Uh, maybe we'll go ahead and take the um, this bottom one to the middle, although we don't have to. I just don't want to have any fractions floating around in here. So we'll take that to be 1, 2, minus 1, 1, uh, 0, 1, minus 1, zero. So you can see what we did there. And then for this one, uh, these two things are going to cancel each other out. So we can add negative one times row two plus row three, put the result back into row three, and we get zero, 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 one. Okay. And so from our linear algebra class, we know that this indicates no solution. But let's go ahead and uh, finish this problem up. Because I'm going to not only sol uh, see what the um, see what's going on here in the uh, in terms of our four fundamental subspaces. Um, so if I go ahead and finish up my row reduction, uh, I need to get rid of this two right here, right? So uh, that's going to be minus two row two plus row one. Oops. Oh darn it. <laughs> okay. So then we have one zero one zero. 0, 1, minus 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. Good. Now the question is find um, a basis for the column space of A, the row space of A, and the null space of A. By the way, uh, we already know that this has, like we were saying, this has no solution. But we can still work on the matrix itself. And so uh, the way we get that, right, is you use the columns of your row reduce matrix to find out which columns of the original were the linearly independent columns. And so the, for the column space of A, we could use as a basis the first two columns of the matrix. Okay. <clears throat> now for the row space of A, um, Notice that in row reduction, we were moving around the order of the rows of A. So this technique doesn't work. You can't use the original rows uh, for your basis. So we have to use the rows from the reduced matrix. And so for the basis for the row space of A, we have 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. Oops, I'm going in the wrong direction. Were you yelling at me? Uh, we have to go this direction. One, because they're the rows.
Okay, and so you see, by the way, that the dimension of the row space and the dimension of the column space are the same, and that is true uh, all the time. And so how about the null space of A? Well, we have to solve AX equals zero, but that's easy when we already have the matrix in row reduced form. Think of uh, putting the initial column right as all zeros, zero, zero, zero. And then, uh, so you would get the end result being the same thing, except you would just have zeros on this side, right? And so now you can see like x1 is equal to minus x3, x2 is equal to plus x3, and then x3 is our free variable. And so you can rewrite that as x3 in uh, kind of a parametric form, right? Remember doing those? And so the basis for the null space is this vector right here. Very good. All right. So just a couple other notes here before we, the next video will be about uh, eigenvectors and eigenvalues. And that is linear independence. So vectors v1 through vn are linearly independent if the only solution to c1 v1 plus, plus cn vn equals zero is the trivial solution, which is C1 equals C2 equals equals Cn equals zero. Now I say that this form is very important um, to remember. Uh, some people tend to remember the matrix form of this, and we're going to write down the matrix form in just a second. But I just want to remind you that vector spaces don't have to have vectors in Rn, right? Vector spaces can have objects that are vectors that are polynomials, for example. Remember we were talking about, for example, P2, the space of all polynomials of degree 2 or less. Or, uh, yeah, there's lots of, there's a space of all continuous functions, for example. So the, the, in that case, the Vs would actually be functions of time instead of uh, functions of, or just uh, vectors in Rn. However, if, <coughs> sorry, if the Vi are each in Rn, I guess we could say, well, let's, yeah, let's go ahead and take the full set. Uh, then x, if we define x to be the matrix using these column vectors, maybe I'll say and here, then the vex, or the columns, are linearly independent when uh, when x is invertible. Linearly independent when x is invertible. And I bring this up here now because we have, do you remember the uh, invertible matrix there? There's like uh, 30 other components to invertible matrix. <laughs> Good. So for example, one of them would be that the null space of A was just zero, or the null space of X. Uh, one would be, let me just write down a few, null space of X equals zero. Uh, the determinant of X equals, or is not equal to zero. Uh, what are some others? Uh, actually, maybe I'll stop here because I was just going to say something about the eigenvalues, but I haven't, uh, we haven't uh, defined those yet, <laughs> or we haven't reviewed them yet. So that'll be the topic of the next video. We're going to talk a little bit about some eigenvalues and eigenvectors.